Hey guys, what we're going to be doing in this video is just evaluating a pretty basic indefinite integral. But uh, I think this is a good example because uh, it just, uh, not only are we doing a little bit of calculus, but we're also reinforcing some stuff we learned back in algebra. So let's go ahead and go with it then. We want to evaluate the indefinite integral of x times the square root of x dx. So I know when some of you guys look at that, you might be like, well, you have a, wow, an x and a square root x in there. So how are you going to handle that all in one? What do we do? But uh, it's actually, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Because what we can do first off is we can rewrite our radical as a fractional exponent. So square root of x, that's just x to the 1 half. Remember learning that? So square root, any root you take for that matter. In this case, it's a square root. So all you do is you rewrite it as a fraction, and the number in the numerator is just the power that x is raised to while it's under the radical. In our case, 1. That's why it's not written there. It's assumed to be 1. And then the, the number of the root you take, well, that's the number that goes in the denominator. So since this is a square root, a 2 goes in the denominator. So square root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. And I'm sure you guys learned that back in algebra, but we use it here because it saves the day. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, and then of course our dx. So now what we can do is we can combine those two. Remember we have, that's x to the first, just regular all x, plus the one half dx. So what I've done here is since we have the same base for both of them, I've just utilized this formula right here. It says x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. So that's also a pretty useful formula to know. It's going to save us right here. So let me go ahead and circle that one for you so you guys can see it a little easier. So yeah, x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b because x is the base for both of those, uh, both of those right there. So that's also what we're going to do here. In our case, a would be 1, and b is going to be 1 half. So 1 plus a half, well, that's going to equal x to the, I'm going to find a common denominator here. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 2 halves. That way, 2 is our common denominator. So we have x to the 1 half, or x to the 2 halves plus 1 half, dx. So, of course, that's all going to equal the integral of x to the 3 halves dx. And from this point, we can just integrate this thing directly. So our antiderivative, remember that's capital F of x, it's just going to equal x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, right? Well, n is 3 halves, so n plus 1 is 3 halves plus 1, so 3 halves plus 1, well, that's the same thing as 3 halves plus 2 halves. Again, I'm just utilizing the common denominator. And remember that exponent is our entire denominator for our antiderivative. So, with that being said, all we have to do is combine some stuff and uh, we'll be good to go. So, capital F of X, our antiderivative. It's just going to equal x to the 5 halves all over 5 halves plus c. And I should have had the plus c up here for the last step, but just make sure you include it because it holds for any indefinite integral. And the only other thing we could do here to clean this up a little more is we could say that our antiderivative equals, since we have a fraction in the denominator, we can take that fraction outside and now multiply by the fraction in the denominator. Before we do that, we have to rewrite it as the reciprocal of that fraction. So instead of dividing by 5 halves, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that, so we'll multiply by 2 fifths. So our antiderivative is capital F of X equals 2 fifths times X to the 5 halves power. Now I'm running off the screen, but I'm going to include it anyway right here plus C. Uh, that's our final answer. And
that's really all there is to it so this is pretty basic but again we just kind of brought some algebra rules in here and tied everything together and uh, I think it was a good example okay and actually what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna take this answer I have and I'm just gonna erase it real quick and uh, just bring it down a line so you can see it a little easier and it's not just so cramped and packed in the very end here because we want you to see what all this work has gotten for us kind of easily without having to strain your eyes too much so our final answer it's just going to be capital F of X equals two-fifths times X to the five-halves power plus C it's all in red there for you should be easy to see and uh, there it is a basic antiderivative or indefinite integral so hope this helps